Hakeem Jeffries, the House Democratic leader, putting out a dear colleague letter today saying, I talked to Biden last night. I expressed what he described as the breadth of insight, heartfelt perspectives and conclusions about the path forward that the caucus has shared in our recent time together. Nothing about whether that is a desire for him to stay in the race or leave it. Yes, it is. He has played his cards very close to his vest this week as he spoke with every member of his caucus, all 213 of them, and relayed their concerns, their messages of support, what have you, because it really does span the spectrum to the president last night. Uh, he, of course, will be instrumental in, in whichever way this ends up panning out. Um, and, but the president is marching forward today, meeting with other congressional Democrats, particularly key groups, the, the Congressional Black Caucus, the Hispanic Caucus. He's supposed to meet with progressives over the weekend. So he does seem to be pushing forward. So whatever Hakeem Jeffries said to him in that meeting yesterday certainly doesn't seem to have been stand down. Mm -hmm. Well, the numbers number of defectors still going up, Kaylee, to your point, we're at, what, 19 now, still just one senator. But, Laura, there were stories about dozens of Democratic lawmakers preparing to issue pre-written statements following the NATO summit, that there'd be maybe a letter with 40-plus names on it. That still has not happened yet. What do you make of it? So there's the conversation really shifted after the press conference. There were the two notable flubs where he called two of his allies, you know, Kamala Harris and uh, Zelensky, by uh, sort of their corresponding enemies, Trump and Putin. Uh, but then the, the rest of the press conference went pretty well. He had uh, command of the facts. He was talking about some complicated stuff, a wide ranging issues. And people said, OK, hold on. Let's just see what happens here. Um, and there was also a realization that publicly coming out against Biden is not helpful, that that has only made him more defiant, more steadfast, and that, you know, doing soft power, reaching out to him. Uh, there are also stories that now his aides are kind of being able to talk to him. They're doing some internal polling, mm -hmm. that that may be a better path forward than a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, fighting this out in public. Well, we actually are seeing Joe Biden now in Michigan live. You can see the images if you're watching on Bloomberg television. And the subject of polling that you were just raising, though, Laura, this is something that Biden talked about in his news conference last night. He suggested that until his team comes to him and says the polling suggests there is no way you can win, he is not going to leave the race. And we got fresh polling from, say, the uh, NPR Marist poll today that actually shows him ahead in a head-to-head -head contest, even if he is behind Trump when you add in third parties. Is the polling indicating right now that Joe Biden is not going to win this race or just that Joe Biden is not believing the polls that are that are saying so the polling and this is true for, you know going back six months and will likely be true going forward is that it is a neck and neck race polling is a snapshot in time there's a bunch of different ways to measure this but it is unlikely that there is going to be a series of polling that shows that there's no way Biden can win that's just not the state of the race here um, so that's sort of he set a bar there that you know almost certainly uh, you know the polls will show him you know within a couple points uh, there's a lot of polls happening you know, specifically looking at, you know, these states, it's going to be 10,000, 20,000 votes that make the difference. And uh, so that was sort of a way for him to be, you know, point at something that he won't actually have to follow through on. So we're still here talking about it. A lot of references to limbo today uh, in the Democratic political world here in Washington. How much time does he get? Is it through Milwaukee as attention shifts to the Republican ticket and the excitement around Donald Trump for half the country next Monday, a reckoning? What do you think? I think we're in very uncharted territory right now, and uh, you know it, it's impossible to say. Certainly, there is concern within the Democratic Party that the longer he waits, should he drop out, that the more difficult it will be for the party to recover from that. Yeah. Um, and not just Biden, but the the down ballot races as well. You know, we, we talk about polling, we're talking about presidential polling, mm -hmm. but really, you know, there's there's growing concern among. Um, House Democrats that they're not going to be able to take over the majority of the House yeah. had they had hoped because, you know, of concern about the trickle down effect from the top of the ticket and low turnout. Uh, you know, I, I could see perhaps something happening, you know, after Milwaukee. All eyes will certainly be on the RNC next week. Uh, but, you know, this is we're we're totally unscripted right now. Well, as we look ahead to Milwaukee, Next week, we still have a few questions, including who's joining Donald Trump on the top of the ticket. That's something he was speaking about in a radio interview earlier today on the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton show. It's like a highly sophisticated version of The Apprentice. Yeah. OK, if you think about it. And um, they're great people. And they're really good. I got to know them very well. I, I'd say four people, you know, four or five people. But I got to know them very well. 
four or five people. We had thought maybe the shortlist, Laura, had been down, narrowed down to two or three people. But he literally described it as a sophisticated version of The Apprentice. So this is... <laughs> This is the reality tv -ification of the Republican convention. It really is. You can tell Trump is having so much fun in this. Just, you know, how he's been talking about this publicly, how frequently he's been talking about it. He loves to stir up the suspense, the intrigue. And what he said in that same interview is that, one, he doesn't know who his VP is going to be, and he also doesn't know when he's going to announce it, and he hasn't <laughs> told his staff. This is incredibly wild. Uh, you know, the, the convention planners must be pulling their hair out, trying to plan, you know, when to slot these speeches, what oh who God. should be, what family should have access. All this stuff has still not been decided, and we're, you know, just a couple days out from the start of the convention. And to think he said uh, at Pat Stakes, it was weeks ago in Philadelphia, that he'd already chosen a running mate. It was stuck in his head. People believed him. Uh, okay, so a sophisticated version of The Apprentice? Highly sophisticated. Highly sophi yes. How about just The Apprentice? That's what this is, isn't it? I mean, I was suggesting maybe even a boardroom set on the stage at the convention. Is that when we're going to find out? Are we going to be in Milwaukee, or do they start beating the drum with some leaks this weekend? It's very possible that this decision isn't made until Monday, and the convention is ongoing, which presumably at that point there would be some sort of big maiden stage presentation. Trump himself has said, look, that he wants to announce at the convention because it would draw rage. Yeah. Uh, draw suspense, but uh, we'll see. Mm -hmm. And of course, Megan, when we consider the list, we know there are a number of senators on it. Senator J.D. Vance of Ohio, Marco Rubio of Florida. How do, does taking them out of the Senate to be vice president factor into the calculation at all? Not so much in, 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 in this sense, and certainly not for Donald Trump. You know, mm -hmm. he's going to pick who he wants to pick without <laughs> a lot of these calculations yeah, happening. Does he care? Um, you know, the, the, the governors of the, those two states are, are Republicans, so they, they would be in Republican hands mm -hmm. should the, the Senate, um, should they have to appoint somebody else. So it doesn't change the calculus yeah. there now.